So this is almost, again, one of the benefits of being online is you don't have to stand in a room full of people and, and wonder if you're looking silly. You can stand in your own lounge room and wonder if you're looking silly, but no one can see you except the cat. Hello and welcome to Good Moves, a podcast by Punch Bars. On our show, we have wholehearted conversations with fitness and yoga studio owners to learn more about the unique ways they run their business and inspiring ways they live their lives. I'm your host, Claire. I ran a thriving yoga studio for eight years and have been part of the Punch Pass team for almost as long. We have so much to learn from each other. Let's jump right in. Welcome to Good Moves. Today we have Stephanie from Fitness Junkie on the show. Welcome, Stephanie. Thank you so much for joining us. Can you just tell Thank us you. a little bit about you and your business? Sure. Uh, my name is Stephanie Medford. I am a pro trainer and master trainer. I've been teaching classes for many years and just love fitness for the joy of movement and the connection that it gives everyone that's involved. So I actually run a virtual training studio. We do group fitness classes in dance modalities, as well as strength training, flexibility, as well as I offer training for fitness professionals. So new and aspiring fitness professionals looking to upgrade their skills and and really make a difference online or live. So Awesome. Thank you so much. Totally. So I know you've been with us for about a year now, and I know you've been running your classes exclusively online for that year. Can you tell me what you were doing before that? So what was the structure of the business prior to that arrangement? Uh, Well, to be honest with you, I, I was really just running certifications. So I work, I was the director for Soul Body Fitness Mm -hmm. out of the US and we were running live classes and had to quickly go to online. And so I was very involved in, in training up and coming master trainers in getting online and feeling comfortable online and being able to get everything um, to sort of resonate in the same way. So that's how it started. I was really just offering certifications. And then the idea with, you know, punch pass was that I realized very quickly that people were willing to come online and, you know, come together for classes. If it was the certification that they were coming together for, I thought, why not come together for a group fitness class like we did in the club? And so I, I, I just decided that punch pass was the way to go because it was just so easy. That was the, the challenge because it was at the beginning of all of this, even Zoom was challenging for everyone, right? right? And the tech part of it was daunting. And so we were losing a lot of people. So that's how it sort of evolved for me is from certifications now to offering group fitness classes online. Beautiful. And are you serving mostly people that are local to you or do you feel like you've reached out to people further away than that? Where do you think your community is coming from these days? The certifications were from all over, typically because I was working with a company yeah. from, uh, from the U.S. So we were getting a lot of Canadians and U.S. instructors. But now I find with my own classes, we are mainly local. I think people typically follow instructors because they know you and they trust you. Right. But the nice thing about that is referrals have brought me people from, say, Ottawa, which is about five hours away, and Montreal. And so it's it's typically in Ontario, but I think that's just the nature of the business. People tend to follow instructors and come to an instructor that was referred to them by someone they know and trust. Yeah, so, absolutely. But it, it is, I mean, the possibilities are are endless. I mean, you can put yourself out there and reach a wide range of people from all over, which is really a nice thing in it's, the industry now. It's changed a lot. I think we've all pivoted hugely in the last couple of yeah. years, and it has been such a massive learning curve. We've had so many, I mean, we have a lot of yoga teachers, we have a lot of fitness people, and just learning, like you said, the technology and the equipment is so massive and we're all expected to take that big leap. Have you, your trainers that you have on board now, are they people that you've trained? So are they people that you've had come up and through and then you've put them in charge of some classes or have they come from other places? Because you have a beautiful looking crew. They look amazing. Thank you. Thank you. I have a small group. uh, I mean, originally it was just me who I was running all the classes and really running myself ragged for a while, Yeah, um, which was really great to have punch pass because I just didn't have time to do the admin part of things. It was really nice to have it all sort of set up for me. But um, the instructors that I do have come on are actually people who I have certified through my certification program uh, through CanFit Pro. And they're teaching 
on the platform and finding it fairly easy to run their classes. They also run their own classes as well. So oh, we sort of work in a nice collaborative way. Yeah. So can you tell me a little bit yeah. more about your fitness journey? Like, why is this so important to you? Why is this something that you feel like you're driven and, and compelled to, to give to other people? Why is it so important? I mean, fitness has always been something I've done since I was in university. It was me coming out of second year and, and needing a part-time job and teaching for the love of it and the love of movement. And I mean, I was a dancer, so it was just a way of, I guess, coming off the stage and on the stage again yeah. in a way. So still staying connected. So for me, that's how fitness came to be so important for me originally. But I think over the years, it's just been um, now that I've chosen it as a career and a lifestyle, I've managed several clubs and I used to have a, a bricks and mortar studio. Mm -hmm. It was more about the opportunity to give people something different because I originally, having been a dancer for so many years, really wanted to bring fitness and dance together. I mean, Zumba was a beautiful tie to that. Yeah. And so it, it was a fairly easy concept to get across to people because it was really movement with joy. Yeah. So that's that's where it has evolved for me and just offering people a place where they can just be themselves, you know, rid themselves of inhibitions and just be free. Yeah. And now with being online and being through the pandemic, it's been really rewarding in the sense that people are not feeling isolated and they're feeling like they can still be together and still, you know, do what they used to do in a club mm -hmm. in their own living rooms. So I just feel like it's it's been my calling and it's been my purpose to really give people a platform to be themselves and to be able to come together and, and enjoy I think it, that, fitness the way I do. So yeah, that's yeah. really, yeah, I, I love that. And I think speaking to a lot of people lately, I think that's becoming more and more the norm of, of come as you are and come show up as you are and maybe it changes you and maybe you stay exactly the same, but just come and move and breathe and and be together. Yeah. What we've been finding in a lot of yoga studios during the pandemic with the online classes is that the, those online sessions have become an opportunity for people to connect beyond the class. Do you find that people are coming early and staying late and, and chatting or do you, you keep it just to the fitness and then on with their day? Oh, no. No, it's <laughs> been... Um... It's been nice because it, it, they do chat afterwards and yeah. everybody's always like, do you have time? And I'm like, <laughs> I always have time. So yeah, I, I always love the fact that they will pop on early and I, I in fact encourage it because that's the one thing, because I was managing clubs for so long, one of the things we always told our instructors, you got to wrap up, you got to move on because the next person's coming in behind you. So, which is really nice now because now I'm like, we've got a lot of time. There's no class coming in behind me. Right. There is that opportunity to connect. Yep. And and I think that's been, I think, a big part of what we're doing right now and why I'm really loving it. People will ask me, do you love teaching live or virtually? And I have to tell you, I probably love the virtual because of that opportunity for connection before and after class where I just don't feel that rush of, of getting out of the, the room. And people feel a little bit, I think because they're in their, their own spaces, yeah. they, they're a little more apt to stay in chat. Whereas I feel in it, you know, when we're in a studio, it's, it's, you know, right. roll with everyone else. <laughs> totally. So, did you expect yeah. to be that comfortable teaching online or did you think that maybe it was going to be a little bit different than what it has ended up being? I, I believe I've, I've always been comfortable doing this, maybe because it's the dance and the performer in right. me. And then I had that opportunity with the um, certifications for Soul Body and, and had an opportunity to get online and feel comfortable in front of the camera. So for me, it wasn't as daunting. I know a lot of the instructors that I chat with, I mean, that is the daunting task is to get online and worry about the tech and the screen share. So I've spent a lot of time just sort of simplifying things for people and making sure that that doesn't distract from what they do best right. as, as their talent. Yeah. So... It's, yeah. Yeah. It's difficult when I used to run my studio and people would get, you know, I'd have teachers worried about checking people in or whatever they need to do. I'd always tell them if it's time to start the class, go and do the class. We'll figure the rest out later. And I think that exactly. online, you know, there's still that you still got to get online. <laughs> Otherwise there is no class, but there's still that feeling of do what you do best, teach the class and, and we can yeah. figure the rest out along the way. Exactly. Yeah. And people are very forgiving. I think through this, people know there's challenges. Everybody's challenged yeah. in some way. 
So I, I always say, you know, you're, I mean, I've been teaching online now for probably almost two years and there's still mishaps here and there, right. you know, but it's, it's, and part of it is control what you can control. Cause a lot of times the technology isn't always going to be perfect. Even just this morning, I, there was a default that happened. My mic wasn't, you know, and it's, it's, it's one of those things where people will tell you, Hey, I can't hear you. You know, yeah. like if it's a matter of taking a couple seconds to check your settings, as long as you, you have that procedure in place of knowing what to do and how to think, fix things as quick as you can people are, are very easy to, to roll with you. So yeah. you just have to take a breath. <laughs> you do. And I think there's a balance. Slow down. You do. And I think walking that line as business owners between being really professional because you are running a business and it's important to deliver the services, but also being very, very human and acknowledging that yeah. things do go wrong. I think that's something when I was looking at your social media and your website, I mean, that's, I'm a little bit biased, but that's my favorite. You know, when people let a little bit of themselves into their business and it's not all, you know, you on one side of the screen and, and your people on the other side of the screen being very, very different. So yeah, I I want to know more about your 500 squat challenge too, just while we're talking okay. about it. <laughs> you know, it's funny because it's funny that you're mentioning that because I have never been one for challenge. That is my very first challenge that I've ever offered. Okay. And I've been teaching maybe 28 years. So, and the reason I'm not a huge fan of challenges is I feel like people are challenged enough in life. Like who needs another challenge? Yeah. But what I was finding is because I got to know my people so well and my community, we called us crew. Yeah. You know, just for, because there was such a trust and relationship and they're always looking for the next thing. I thought, you know, let's, let's try and challenge ourselves and me included. Like that's one of those things where I don't put anything out unless I'm also going to be part of it and I'm going to be challenged by it and we're going to do it together. Yeah. So yeah, so it was just sort of an idea that came across where they could track their workouts, track their progress. Cause I'm all about progressive, you know, improvement um, I'm not one to do all 500 squats in the first shot. So I gave us a good long time yeah. to, to get good at doing five, 500. So, um, yeah, it's just been really fun. And we, we offered some, I, which was with punch pass was really great because I was able to offer some classes where we do it together. So if you're not accountable on your own, you can join me on a couple live classes and we'll just count together. And I was horrible at counting. So it turned out that everybody had to unmute and, and count out loud. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so we've just been having fun with it. And I have a little prize. Actually, it's kind of hidden be behind all the plants. But because I had a fitness retail store and I still do a little bit of equipment, I put a nice little prize, prize package together. So that's nice. kind of a little fun thing to work towards too, right? Always yeah. the reward in setting the goal. Absolutely. So, um, yeah. I need to know how long it takes to do 500 squats because I didn't watch it. It takes us about 15, 15 minutes. Really? 15. That's, yep. I'm, yeah. I need it's to give it a try bad. now. I still need to work out today. Maybe I'll give it a try when I get home. Yeah, yeah that's a, 15 minutes of squats is long. <laughs> that, so, yeah, that is a but, long time. Yeah, and so we're, you, we're having fun. That's good. And the other thing that I really like the look of, because this is something that I've wondered about myself, I've been working out at home during the pandemic and all that good stuff. Working out barefoot, this is something I haven't yeah. seen anyone else actively advocating for, which I think is really interesting. Can you tell me a little bit more about barefoot workouts and why that's something yes. that you offer? I can I can talk about that passionately. Wonderful. Um, not because I advocate it for everyone. Uh, there are a couple of my crew that um, do, will wear running shoes. I am, I've had chronic plantar fasciitis for years. So oftentimes I've, I've, I mean, I'm always in running shoes. I'm always in orthotics. And what I found is that personally, I really needed to strengthen the muscles of my feet. Right. And so when I started doing soul body bar and um, the barefoot classes in dance and getting it back to my dance roots, well, everything is barefoot. Yeah. I found that I was healing my plantar fasciitis and I haven't had issues probably since I started bar, which was about five years ago. So it worked for me. Right. It doesn't work for everyone because obviously a doctor might advise that you're always, and it depends on what stage of healing you're at too, right? Of course. But the other part of that is if, if you can strengthen the muscles of the feet, I always like to give us an opportunity to do that because we are so held in position and, and 
you know, if you've ever seen the Ibrams, I've never actually owned a pair, but mm. that whole concept of being close and grounded, I just really liked the feel of the ground under my feet. Being able to say when I push my weight onto my baby toes, I can actually feel my baby toes right. pushing into the floor. Yeah. And so you can give people that kind of mind-body connection of where they should be transferring their weight on yeah. their feet. So I, 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 I just say, you know, if you, and everything I do is low impact, except sometimes I go crazy. I, I love Soka and Carnival. So when we do a dance class, we wear running shoes. Okay. Um, but for the most part, most of it's low impact mm -hmm. and it's about softening the landing. If, if you look at a dancer, a ballet dancer, it's a soft landing in a saute. So that's, that's really just my concept that I teach, but okay. not mandatory. I really like it because I've come yeah. from a yoga background and I found when I started working out, it didn't feel right. To, or I would, I would go between yoga and, and some hit and things like that. And I didn't want to put shoes on and then take shoes off. So I just started not putting shoes yeah. on in the first place. And yeah, it's really nice to see that that's yeah. something that is encouraged and supported in some circles because it felt kind of wild to me for a while, but now it feels really, really natural. I think the body is yeah. designed to do what yeah. the body is designed to do. Right. And you've got a dance challenge coming up with one of your teachers. I love, love this idea, actually. This can't dance, let's dance. Because yeah. I think <laughs> it's one of those lines in the sand, I think, where people are either dan people who dance or they're just like, I can't, there's no way. And I find yeah. those sort of lines in the sand really, really interesting. So tell me more about that one coming up. Sure. Uh, well, it's a friend of mine, April Power. She is a dance instructor. She actually has a dance studio in her house. So back in the day, her and I, we used to dance for the Toronto Argonaut dance team. And so we were connected through movement and hip hop and the love of just um, performing. So when we, we actually live in the same area, which is, was really convenient. And we thought, why don't we put out together a dance class? Cause we, our styles are very similar mm -hmm. and I'm sure that my crew will really resonate with what she has to offer. So that's how we sort of came together. And the whole idea, it's funny because although I have this dance background and I, I teach all these dance classes, my, a lot of my crew aren't necessarily dancers. I mm -hmm. do have a lot of people who just love dance and that's how they came to me. But a lot of people are experimenting and maybe haven't danced and don't necessarily feel very comfortable. Mm. And I've been, and so this is an opportunity for me to give them an, a chance to sort of slow things down, not necessarily in a fitness way, but really looking at the downbeats, the isolations, the, the the patterning, like all of the pieces that make up a dance. Right. And week by week focus. So she's basically teaching rhythm and how the body moves and technique in a really nice slower pace mm -hmm. so that people can just really connect to the music. And so what I'm hoping is when they come to my classes, um, which are more fitness based, everything feels a lot more natural and, yeah. and that awkwardness kind of goes. Yeah, because totally. Because that's the thing. Is we're all up in our head all, most of the time. Yeah. So it's just about letting go and going, okay, I got this. And even if it doesn't look per perfect, it doesn't matter, you know, so. I guess it's probably less confronting to an, an online scenario. So this is almost, again, one of the benefits of being online is you don't have to stand in a room full of people and, and wonder if you're looking silly. Mm -hmm. You can stand in your own lounge room and wonder yeah. if you're looking silly, but no one can see you except the cat or. Um, exactly. I think that's really, really brilliant. And I think that breaking it down into those small parts is really brilliant because it is like, it's like learning a language, you know, like some people naturally pick it up faster, some people slower. I think, again, coming back to my yoga background, it feels like the same thing is you've got to learn the little bits before they kind of coalesce and become a flow and dance is a type of flow too. So it's a beautiful thing to start it. No, one, I don't know. The idea of teaching someone just to dance, to dance freely, I think is really unique mm -hmm. because, you know, you can learn to do jazz or tap or ballet, but just the idea of learning to dance to a beat yeah. in rhythm is a great thing to do. Mm -hmm. And people like the structure. They want you to break it down. Right. Like, where did the hip go here? Where did, and how did you make that happen? So sometimes it is like taking it down to the basics and, and really just working through the movement where then they get that feel of like, okay, this feels natural. This is, this is going to flow Yeah. when I pick up the beat. And when, when that rhythm changes, I can still stay on, you know, stay on beat with yeah. that movement. So yeah. And she'll show different rhythms, which is really great because I, I mean, we go in, in a typical Zumba or in my, case fusion dance fitness will go from hip hop to Latin 
to um, sometimes a Bollywood type track. Oh and so they're so different, yeah. right? In, in the movements, it's really the patterns are the same. It's just the intonations are different. And, right. Um, some of the movements, the way you move your hip in one versus another, but I just typically very similar. I think giving people those moments where it clicks is just such a beautiful thing to give someone, especially if they felt very uncoordinated, that moment where they piece together three, four movements and get in the kind of flow of it all, I think is such a beautiful thing to give people. Do you come at it from a mental health standpoint? Do you feel like dance is, I know a lot of people are talking about intuitive dance for, you know, just shaking out negative feelings, not as a replacement for therapy or medication, people. Yeah. Um, but, you know, as a way to really support yourself. Is that something that you feel as well? Is it something that helps 100%. your head? 100%. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's that's why I dance. In the end, it's – and my whole concept, it's, it, you know, I come from um, the gym environment for years where it's so body conscious. Right. And I, I feel like it. people really just need to – move for the way their body is going to allow them to move and just really love what they're doing yeah. and the release. And typically if someone finds a release of stress or just sort of that adrenaline rush that you get from mm. working out, that's going to motivate people to build consistency in a workout Absolutely. In a routine anyway. Yeah. Right. So if you can tackle it from there where they really find that connection, then the consistent workouts, that routine, that want to to work out on a regular basis becomes less like I I've got to work out three times a week and and, and it becomes right. more about what you're doing. Or I've been working out for so. three months and I haven't lost a pound and oh my God, what's going right. wrong? But if you've enjoyed thirty workouts in, you know, whatever, then they were beautiful moments and Yeah, the endorphins kicked in and there was no reason to need to lose weight through them. Do you, how do you, how do you find the body image side of things, especially with your training side and being in the fitness industry on a bigger picture in your area? How are you finding that is being approached these days? Has it changed or? In the personal training side of Mm. things? Well, I think for the most part, when people, typically approach you and want a personal trainer, it's usually because they want to lose inches or they want to gain strength, which is great. I mean, that's typically why you'd want to hire a trainer to give you that guidance on how to do those. And I mean, we follow uh, a certain, you know, protocol on how to make that happen for a client. Obviously it's individual to the client, right? but I don't, th- I don't think it's changed so much there, but I really try and use my background in all of these different modalities mm-hmm. to give the variety and make it more about the fun and the workout yeah. so that they don't just, you know, go through, okay, now we're squatting, now we're lunging. <laughs> Music's a big part of that. Like, so it's not a boring session. Right. Like, because that, that's the thing is, is you, you need to find always that spark in the client and you need to find out what they like. Yeah. So I guess that's, there's always an end game that, that you're going for in the end, but it's how to get there is, is the part that I really focus on. Yeah and making sure that they're feeling motivated all the way through. Because I think one of the things that's great about your business in particular is the variety of classes that you offer. Do you find that people, it's probably one of the biggest varieties I've seen recently because it really runs the gamut. Yeah, it's great. Do you find that people stick to the same type of class and get stuck in or are there a lot of people that kind of bounce around and enjoy different, different things every week? Yeah, not every week. (laughs) <laughs> I, I have to graduate people <laughs> into different things. Yeah. In fact, it's funny because, you know, because I manage clubs for so long, we always, you know, you change the schedule every quarter and people are always complaining. Why did you change? I love that class. Yeah. That was my favorite class. And, you know, there's always that thing as a manager, you're always like, okay, get ready. <laughs> They're all going to be knocking <laughs> at my door. yourself. So, so I actually, before I make, I do the same thing online. I change the schedule every quarter, mm-hmm. not drastically, but I, I do it enough that those, that gives them an opportunity to try something new yeah. so that there's muscle confusion. There's that opportunity to, to feel motivated by something else and feel the challenge. Mm. 
right? So the variety is really important to me, but at the same time, I want some consistency. Yeah. When I look at the schedule, I want to make sure I have three strong and shapelies. I have a couple dance right now. I'm missing one of the dances because I really want them to have those two opportunities to do cardio yeah. in the day or in the week. So yes, the, the variety is there to keep them intrigued, to keep it balanced between the weight training, the cardio and the flexibility. That's a big one. Obviously, yeah, that's I, huge. I, I'm a trainer to trainer. So I want to make sure I hit the, you know, the basic components. Yeah. But I don't profess to be a, an expert in all of those. In fact, the yoga, I try to, I, not really yoga, but a, I do fluid flexibility, which is more dancer based. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a dancer's warm up and cool down that resonates with me so that I can execute well, but I actually hired someone to um, teach a yoga class. Um, so awesome. it was important to me that they were able to experience yoga in its authentic form as well. Yeah. Yeah, I think there's definitely some gray areas there, but I think a pure yoga class is a fantastic thing to have on a, a generally fitness-based schedule. But then you yeah. obviously have people fill in the gaps with your, what we call a content library, so your recorded videos. So have you found people jumping onto those for their favorites That's or something? Huge. Yeah. Yeah, I I really wasn't sure if people would get into those because there's YouTube, there's all of the different right. options for free <laughs> workouts, yeah. right? But I think they, they've been popular because I will usually give a theme for the week of what we're going to be working on and I'll recommend certain videos. So sometimes I'll pop it up and I call them replays. And in fact, I record a video on the weekend, put it up as sort of the theme for the week, and then they are able to do that workout on their own. So what's beautiful is I've been able to offer a live class. And then if you can't make the live class, there's this pre-recorded class yeah, um, available. Awesome. So it, it's been huge. And in fact, I stopped recording because sometimes the, the only thing when you're recording a live class, which is great because I can just record me, mm. but I really want that connection with my community. Yeah. So I don't necessarily feel really great call, you know, saying so-and-so's name and so-and-so and going, going on a library. Yeah. So I typically will record some and then I, I call the others replays, ones that I do on my own and I, I tend to spend a little more time. Yeah, I think that's but just common. having the variety is huge. Like having the content yep. is like this week I had something going on. We had a funeral last weekend. And so unfortunately I couldn't, you know, record a video. So I was able to go through my library and pop one up and say, this is basically what we're going to be doing this week. So this is a perfect fit. That's awesome. And it was, it, it's nice. It, it offer, offers that opportunity to give someone a workout despite, you know, whether you can be there live with them. Yeah. And do you foresee, so. do you think you're going to make any sort of sweeping changes as hopefully over the next six months or so, obviously we can all be out and about and going back to gyms and things. Do you feel like this is your structure for the foreseeable future? Is this how it's going to roll? Oh yeah. Well, I keep telling, I keep telling it like virtual is not going anywhere no. because I mean, the one thing I know from managing clubs is when someone came through the door, it was a big deal. Like it was a big thing to celebrate someone coming in. A very small percentage of the population actually works out and steps foot in a gym. Yes. So, and, and for me as a manager, I was always about retention. Like how do we keep them motivated? How do we keep them here? How do we, you know, give them that personal attention? So this I can do in my space, which is really nice. And I have a smaller group and mm -hmm. I have a really personal connection. So that's probably why I love it so much yeah. is retention is, is such a part of, you know, who I am in fitness that I can do it really well yeah. online. But I, I always tell people like you're hitting the, that group, that huge part of the population, the missing piece, the ones that won't necessarily come into the gym. Mm. And, and they can turn their cameras off. Like I love to have a conversation with someone just like I would if someone came into a gym and sat down and talked about their goals. I'll have a conversation and like, how comfortable are you? How new are you at working out? And, and let's say, see, you know, I'll prescribe a certain starting point, mm. but I'm a big one for saying, turn your camera off. Yeah. Like until you feel comfortable, I'm right here. Yeah. And it, it is like so amazing because I, I can remember one of the crew members, she she was camera off for a long time. 
And she she turned our camera on one day and she was like, I turned it on. I turned it on. And we like so celebrated that Mm -hmm. because and and honestly, I just think for that reason alone, I'm I'm so grateful to do what I'm doing because it allows people to to take this progressively and feeling comfortable, but moving their bodies in front of other people. Yeah. Right. But some people. Yeah. And I think it's it's people come to it in such different places in their life, too. I mean, you have people that come wanting to make friends, you know, wanting to chat to everybody, you know, wanting to yeah. get connected with everybody. And then you have people that just want to come in and work out and leave. And yeah. I think there's such a fine balance there between drawing those quieter people out of their shells, but also just respecting the fact that maybe that's okay. And that's just what they need in their lives right now. It is super exciting when it changes and you can feel them sort of opening up a bit. But yeah, there's yeah. there's just a certain number of people that will not ever want to stay after and chat and, and connect, which is a beautiful thing too, I think. Yeah. And that's the beauty of online, exactly. I think, is the flexibility of it. It's just so great. It's That's exactly what it is. And I, I think for the most part, like people are, uh, it's it's funny because I am back at the clubs right now. I'm teaching a few classes a week. Yeah. And I love that too. It's really, it's nice to be live and in person and feel the energy that way. It's, it's just different. Yeah. But a lot of um, people are doing both yep. now. Know, like they're getting the best of that experience online when they don't have time and they can fit it in the middle of their day. Right. Offering lunch hour classes, for example, where yep. they would spend half of their lunch traveling and then maybe they go to the gym after work or on the weekend. So yep. I think it's complementing the needs of people who are consistent with the gym, but it, then it's also complementing the ones that aren't necessarily comfortable going into a gym. Absolutely. So, and and I always say we sort of feed each other because who knows if people who come on to my, in my community start getting comfortable with fitness and feeling comfortable in front of the camera and then decide they want to go and join a gym mm. because, right? Yeah, so, absolutely. It, I mean, it's a win-win in the end yeah. for all of us. Yeah, so. it does make it easier to take that first step. I think it's absolutely fantastic. Yeah. And I assume for the people yeah. that do have their cameras on, are you providing feedback and, and form information and things like that? Or are you more teaching out into the group mm-hmm. or do you like to talk to people individually? It, it's funny because I, there's, I would consider them two modalities. Right. I, I do performance. Like I, I find that in group fitness, you are typically performing like when you're doing a dance class. In yeah. fact, I turn my mic off and I, we're just kind of celebrating together and the communication is nonverbal. Mm-hmm. But then there's classes like Strong and Shapely where we have a theme and we might be doing a build phase or a burn phase and I'm watching them, but I'm doing the workout with them. So I'm motivating them. Still to me, because it's unlimited people coming to a group and you have a large group, there's only so much coaching you can do. I can sort of give encouragement for the most part and always give them form cues to hope they change, which is typical of a group fitness class. Mm -hmm. But where I'm moving into is because I've been doing one-on-one personal training more recently. So, I mean, I've been training for for years, but now finally getting, you know, online, I can do this one-on-one as well. Yeah, I'm really excited about adding in an option for small group training. So that's where that opportunity will be to train and coach a little bit more. So, so working less with the same group. Me performing yep. music, more coaching. So I think you have to set up the environment a mm-hmm. little bit more yeah. to be really effective in that way and and minimize like, and really have a set number of people because it's, I mean, there's 15 blocks across the street. It's so there's hard. There's only so much Cats and do. dogs and kids and all kinds of chaos. It's sort of a yeah. beautiful thing, but it's hard to be in touch. So you would work with the same small group over a period of time and then get to know them and their goals a little bit more intimately. Yes. Yeah. That's so that's awesome. a service that I'm actually um, launching in December. So oh, cool. it, I'm really excited about doing that and just giving that option for those who want it. It's obviously a little bit more money to do that, but for some people that's, it, it's really important. And, yeah. And, and would people would be a good option. Is the idea that people bring their own group or is the idea that people join at a certain time and end up with the same three people. Because I love the idea of getting my husband and my kid and saying, hey, we're going to do this at home. I mean, I think that's a really good option too because that's a really hard thing to find is family training or, yeah, small group with a friend. So that's, it's brilliant. 
Totally. I, yeah. And I think that's the, I mean, with punch pass, I love that because you can set it up as a class, you can set up as an appointment, like there's the option. So with my one-on-one clients now I'm setting up as, you know, our, just our sessions, Yeah. but I can offer it like I would offer any of my classes that I'm doing right now, but limit the number of people. So yeah. once they reserve, that makes them a lot more, and, you know, I guess a call to action. If there's only three spots available, yeah. they want to get in there and they're going to be more accountable to it because they know they had to, you know, yeah. go through hoops to get that spot. Absolutely. The psychology of yeah, having it booked in and, and knowing that it's your time, I think as humans, it's, we're like little hamsters, you know, if it's on the calendar rather than, I think I might go to her class at six o'clock on a Tuesday night, being booked in for a small group training session at six o'clock on a Tuesday night, it's a completely different feeling I think it's an appointment like a doctor's appointment and somehow that yeah, that's the key. hacks our brain a little bit and we're like well we're booked in now and and we're ready to go uh works pretty well with classes as well but I think with sessions like that it works particularly well to get yeah. people motivated and consistent is that exactly. the final sort of little addition you're going to be making over the next six months like you seem pretty happy with how things are set up so the small group training and then just carry on as you are yeah, well, it's it's funny because it's just been a constant evolution. Yeah. <laughs> so I think I think it's just like I I think it's just going to keep growing from here. And I have you know as an entrepreneur for years, I just have too many ideas. Right. And I just want to do everything. So I try and do it in a nice formalized fashion so that I can do it well. Yeah. But yeah, I think for now, the next phase would be now that I have a community in group fitness is now to sort of offer that more one-on-one personal coaching. And then those small specialty classes like I have April coming to teach so that people can just join for say six sessions and and learn to dance and then join into the group fitness. So everything sort of relates to one of the other services that I'm offering. Yeah. I also, um, I mean, because I, I come from pre-pandemic, I mean, I actually left my job as a manager of a club to really get into certifying instructors and, and being a mentor for fitness instructors and mm-hmm. personal trainers. So I really, I'm trying to get back there. This has been really taking a lot of my time and and I'm really passionate about what I'm doing right now with the clients. Yeah. But at some point when all this sort of settles and I I've got a really nice streamlined program, I'd like to come back to my fitness instructors and um, I have a six week um, mindset course where it's helping aspiring and new fitness instructors build their business and their brand and up level their skills so that they can teach effectively, whether it be live or online. That's really So that is the other piece of what I do. And I'm, I'm really anxious to get back there and I'm doing it, you know, I have a couple of clients on the side, yeah. but eventually to have both of those streams between yeah. the fit pros and, you know, the clients themselves would be a beautiful thing. Yeah. That and then like it would a good be addition. full package. That would me. be everything. And then you just you know, yeah. settle down and relax for a little bit. But I did want to ask you about balance in your own life because obviously you have a lot going on, but I also noticed that you are a good proponent for having some balance in your life. Can you just speak to that a little bit? I did see dogs. I'm going to need details on the dogs. Yeah. So balance for me is super important because I didn't have it for a long time. Okay. I have been running this business probably almost 20 years, which is, is strange when I think about that. And I think of all the time that went so quick because you were just so wrapped up in in doing what you're doing. Right. I came from having a, a studio and stores when my kids were very young. Yeah. So they were practically, you know, in they were I was teaching classes and they're in the back room fighting. <laughs> Been there. And I'm like trying to yell like, no, stop, yep. I'm teaching a class. You know, so I I come from a fairly high stress trying to build a business with a young family. Mm -hmm. And then obviously going into that sort of high adrenaline of managing a club and lots of people. So it's probably in my nature to take on a lot of things. But I've I've really, you know, enjoyed just focusing and kind of coming back and letting a few things go and really just putting my 100% into which is now building this business as it is in a virtual studio. Yeah. And, um, uh, but 
I, I do really believe that doing this from home is allowing me a lot of that balance <laughs> because I'm able to come and teach a class. I can go right back inside. I can drink my coffee <laughs> when, I, when <laughs> yeah. I'm when i ready to have a coffee in the morning, come back out. I can take breaks in the middle of my day. So I've actually structured my day where I do classes. Now I'm starting at 6.30 in the morning until about 12.00 in the afternoon if I go and teach a live class and then I don't teach again until 5.30, but I make that schedule, right? So I can go and take the dogs for a walk and CC and Charlie have Boston Terriers at like two and three in the afternoon. And I just feel that whole like rejuvenation for the evening classes. And I'm able to think, I listen to my AirPods, I listen to the music and Mm -hmm. kind of plan what I'm going to do. Yeah. Yeah. And just have more time to just think. Yeah. I think, you know, and plan and and take sort of what I call power hours in just me time. Yeah. Um, and Such journaling and, and making this plan. Yeah. So it's not as chaotic. And I think being virtual is really lent to that. Yeah. 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 It's become this so amazing gift, I think. Really key. Yeah. And balance. Yeah. And letting yeah. people get balance. And you have balance by in your teaching and your business. I think it's really a beautiful but it's arrangement. It's scheduling. It's it's yeah. really like scheduling that day in pockets and yeah. making sure that you've a lot you know assigned certain parts of your day to just yourself. Absolutely, <laughs> and that's such a hard part to do. You know? Yeah, you put in your meetings and your zooms yeah. and your admin and things like that, but you have to put in those chunks. I completely agree. Yeah. We're gonna wrap up, okay. Stephanie. I really appreciate okay. you being a part of the podcast today. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Oh, you're so welcome. It's been absolutely my pleasure. So thank you so much. If you'd like to learn more about any of the guests that we've featured on the show or about Punch Pass, you can head to our website at punchpass.com.